buzz about him? Eddie, please. Please what? I asked the man to have a drink with me. What's wrong with that? How about it, Mr. Frazzlebottom? Okay, partner. Uh, I knew Mr. Frazzlebottom wasn't going to pass up a free one. Don't you understand, Eddie? This is Jimmy Ringo. All right, so it's Jimmy Ringo. So what's everybody supposed to do, fall on their knees? Well, you can be a little polite, at least. Mr. Ringo, Chuck figures you got a little extra consideration coming to you around here. Is that right? No. Nope. How's that, Mr. Ringo? You'll have to speak up if you want me to hear you. Why don't you button up your britches and go home? How'd you like to try to make me, Mr. Ringo? Now, listen, partner. I come in here minding my own business. Now, how about letting me go out the same way? I want to know first what you meant by that remark you just passed. Tell you what. You just bought me a drink. Now I'll buy you one and then we'll drop it. What do you say? Give him a drink from me. Never mind a drink. I want to know what you meant by that remark you passed. Listen, Eddie. I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to Mr. Ringo. I want to know what you meant by that remark you passed. How come I gotta run into a squirt like you nearly every place I go these days? What are you trying to do, show off in front of your friends? Are you ready to back up that remark or not? And what about this? Ain't some of you fellas in charge of this donkey? I'm telling you, Mr. Ringo. Eddie don't mean no real harm, Mr. Ringo. Then let Eddie keep his big, ugly nose out of my business if he don't want to get it slapped. <laughs> See that? Yes, sir. He drew first. Do you see it? Yeah, I saw it. Yes, sir, I saw it. Except I'd get on out of town anyway if I was you. Why? Because he's got three brothers that ain't gonna care who drew first. All right. Everybody stay where you are. Can't be more than an hour ahead of us. Must be killing that horse of his. Ain't doing now any good either. You can't keep it up at this rate. That horse of his won't last half a day. All right, put up your hands. <laughs> now drop your guns. Right out there where I can see them. Now get off your horses and stay away from them guns. Back up. Right back there. me, bud. You got all you can do to worry about yourself. You got about three hours walk back to Santa Fe. Now get going. I'm warning you, Ringo. We're gonna get you yet. Yeah, I know. I heard that before, too. You had no right to throw down on a boy like Eddie. What was I supposed to do? Just stand there and let that little boy shoot me full of holes? Now come on, get out of here. No more than a kid. <laughs>
He's heading straight for Cayenne. Well, you think you can make it? Cayenne ain't no further than Santa Fe. Come on. A drink. Are you up early or out late? Either way you want it, partner, just so I get a drink. Jimmy Ringo. Well, where was it with you? By the Mint Saloon in Dodge City. You and Bucky Harris used to come in there nearly every night, don't you remember? Could we ever get a drink? Sure. Oh, 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 sure. Sorry, Jimmy. Hey, remember now? Yeah, I remember now. What about some to eat? You got a cook around here? Yeah, my old woman's back there. What do you want, some eggs? You got a steak? Yeah, I got a steak. I'll take a steak and some eggs and a pot of black coffee. What about a place to wash up first? Well, right out on the back porch here. I'll, I'll show you. Never mind, I can find it. You got a livery stable here, boy? Hey, he's a little astonished, Jimmy. When you get him unastonished, tell him to take care of my horse. Yeah. Oh, and don't ride him. Lead him. He's all wore out. Archie, you heard what Mr. Ringo said. Now go on and do it. You gonna be around? Hurry up, Archie. Sure, I'm here all day. Wanna have a little talk with you? <laughs> yes, sir. Run over yonder and tell the marshal that Jimmy Ringo is here and hurry. Was it really him? Go on, I tell you. Run. Oh, Archie, 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 who told you it was Jimmy Ringo? Mac. Mac knows him. Mac called him Jimmy. He's on the back porch washing himself. Charlie. Yeah. Get hold of Bud and Skeeter. I ain't after any trouble, Mark. I just thought you'd want to know he was here. You sit over there, Charlie. Stand down there, Skeeter. Take the door, bud. Just take it easy and don't try to jump him.
Hiya, Jimmy. Mark. Oh, you son of a gun. How are you, partner? I'm fine, Jimmy. Are you joking? Nope. I'm the marshal here now. Well, I'll be darned. And these idle bar room loafers, they're your deputies? Mm-hmm. For me? Mm-hmm. Then you won't be needing them. I ain't starting anything. You sure? Mark, that's the last thing I want, trouble. All right, boys. What are you doing here, Jimmy? It's about to have a drink. How about it? No, thanks. Marshal Mark Stratton. Well, that ain't a good one. But I'm glad for you, Mark. Mighty glad. Thanks. But I'm afraid I'm gonna have to ask you to move on. Why? I ain't wanted for anything around here, am I? Nope. I just want you out of town anyway. And pronto. Coffee ready, Mr. Ringo. Thank you, lady. Well, you don't mind my having something to eat while we discuss this, do you, Mark? I'll have the rest in a minute. Matter of fact, I don't know anybody in the world I'd rather talk to this morning than you. Oh, lady, will you bring another cup for the marshal? Yes, sir. How about it, Mark? I got something I want to talk to you about. Looks to me like you got a gossip on your staff. That's your public, Jimmy. Yeah, I'm a big man now. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Top gun of the West. Yep. Guess I got more people wondering when I'm gonna get killed than any other man in the country. You don't sound as happy about it as you did the last time I saw you. How many is it now, 11? 12. There's one you ain't heard about yet. You really keep count. Don't ask dumb questions, Mark. What's the trouble now, Jimmy? Somebody after you? Three somebodies. The law? No, this is personal. I don't want them to catch up with you here, Jimmy. I don't want them to catch up with me anywhere. That's why you gotta move on right away. You know why I come here. Don't you? I guess I do. How is she? Fine. And the boy? Getting on fine. I want to see her, Mark. You think she wants to see you? I got something important to see her about. Then I'll clear out. Where can I find her? I'm afraid I can't tell you that, Jimmy. What do you mean you can't tell me? All right, then, won't tell you. You want a steak, Marshal? No, thanks. Why won't you? Because nobody here knows who she is, Jimmy. She never even told the boy about you. They've got another name now and another life. And it looks to me like that's the way she wants it to stay. Will you tell me what name she's going under? So as I can write to her? Nope. I won't tell you that, either. Looks to me like you're taking quite a lot on your own responsibility, ain't you, Mark? I'm doing what I think is right, Jimmy. And I'm hoping I can make you see it that way, too. See that street out there full of gunplay, Mark? I'd rather not. Well, that's probably what you're gonna have a couple hours from now. Because I ain't leaving here till you get a hold of Peggy for me. And what if she don't want to talk to you? Well, you let her do the deciding about that. Will you go then, if I tell her? I told you I would. Just tell her, I mean, not make her do anything about it. Just leave it to her, that's all I ask. You better wait in here, not move around much. I'll see what I can do about it. Well, while you're at it, you got any squirts around here that want to make a big name for themselves. 
I hope you'll cool them off before we run into any trouble. I will. Boy, get out away from here. Why don't you go on about your business and leave Ringo alone? He ain't bothering anybody, is he? Oh, well. Faster than White Earp. I've lost in wires the fastest span in the whole world. Why, Jimmy, you're going to kill White Earp in a minute. Well, you bet. I'll bet you a million dollars he would. You seen Hunt probably around this morning? No. What's he done now? I think I just want to see him. Pass the word around, will you? Sure will, Mark. Morning, Marshal. Morning, Miss Allen. He don't look so tough to me. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it always starts. He don't look so tough to somebody. Except with this somebody, it's gonna stop right there, too. You better. Because with a man like that, you can't come off much better than second. He don't bother me, I don't bother him. The only somebody that's bothering me right now is Mr. Hunt Brownlee. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that squirt. You seen him already? No, but maybe you better take a look around for him now. Want me to bring him in? Just tell him I want to see him. But make sure he comes. I'll get him. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? Watch yourself. Don't take any chances with that boy. I don't aim too much. Morning, Charlie. Hi. Have you seen Hunt Bromley around this morning? No. Nope. Not this morning. Well, tell him I'm looking for him if you see him, will you? Sure will, Charlie, if you see him. Hmm. Looks like it might be a right interesting day. Carlo? Hello, Mr. Marr. Where are all you girls going this time of day? We got a holiday. None of the boys came to school this morning. So Miss Wash said we could go, too. You mean all the boys played hooky? Yes, sir. We went downtown to see that bad man, that Jimmy Ringo that's down there. Come on, Carlo, come on. Mark. You already heard, huh? Yes, the children told me. The girls, that is. None of the boys came this morning. I guess they're all down around the palace bar by now. Little Jimmy, too? I suppose so. He's about as wild as the rest of them. What's Jim doing here, Mark? Do you know? He says he wants to see you. What about? He didn't say. I thought you might know. No. I didn't tell him anything, your name or anything like that. I just said I'd tell you he wants to see you and leave the rest to you. What do you think? I ain't thinking. I got nothing to say either way. Well... I won't do it. I can fix it for you on the quiet if you want to see him. No. I think it's better the way it is. Tell him I'm sorry. Whatever you say, Peg. Mark. How does he look? Oh, just about the same, I guess. A little older, a little tireder. Not as cocky as he used to be. Tell him I'm very sorry. I'll tell him. Want some more coffee, Mr. Ringo? No, thank you, lady. I'm going to bring that bottle over here. Matt! Right up, Jimmy! Best stuff in the West, this old coon or ride. A lot of fellas around here won't drink anything else. 
have somebody chase them kids out of there. Ain't you got a school here for them to go to? Sure, Jimmy, we got a school. I'll get him away from you. mother hears about this. But we're not hurting anybody, Mrs. Devlin. You just wait till I tell her you're loafing around the saloon. Good morning, Miss Devlin. Good morning. It's simply an outrage. That murderer is sitting over in that saloon like he was an honored guest or, or something, and the children literally running wild through the streets. I completely agree with you, Mrs. Devlin. And five pounds of sugar. And yes. did you see all those loafers hanging around over there? You'd think it was Deadwood or one of those places. Mark Strett will get him out of there soon. Soon? And pray, how long is a murderer supposed to be entertained in Cayenne? How much are these potatoes? Uh, eight cents a peck. Uh, two for 15. I'll have a half a peck. You know who'll do something about it? Mrs. Penny Feather. Exactly. She'll get a little action out of Mark Strett. Will you go with me to talk to her? I most certainly will, just as soon as I get some of these lovely onions. What about you, Mrs. Cooper? I'd like to meet Mrs. Penny Feather very much. Morning, ladies. Good morning, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, good morning, Mr. Marlowe. Twist to the bagger, George. It's all excitement in front of the palace. Well, it's that murderer, of course. What murderer? Well, that's Jimmy Ringo. Well, haven't you heard? Where's Jimmy Ringo? Sitting right over there in the palace bar, just as big as you please. We're going straight to Mrs. Pennyfeather right now. Hi, Jerry. What'd you forget? What are you going to do? Jerry. Jimmy Ringo's in the palace bar. And when he comes out, he's going to get this right in the face. Have you gone crazy? Get your hand off that door. Why, that's murder, Jerry. What was it when he killed Roy? You're not even sure that was Ringo. He was in the bunch. That's enough for me. But you don't know that. That's just what people said. Oh, Jerry, please don't get us in any more trouble. We've got all straightened out now. You're wasting your breath, Alice. All I know is Ringo killed my boy, and I'm going to kill Ringo. Just as soon as he walks out that door. Boy, take care of my horse. Oh, getting cleaned up right now, Jimmy. Here he comes. Never do that again, Alice. Never. I know what I'm doing, and I'm going to do it. Found that boy. Archie. Say, any of you fellas seen Archie? Yeah, yeah. I could just run across the store a minute ago. Archie! Archie! Here I am, Mac. Go see how soon Mr. Ringo's horse will be ready. And hurry up, Archie. All right, Mac. Hey, Mac, Ringo don't look so tough to me. Then why don't you go in there and take a punch at him? <laughs> For what? I ain't got nothing against the man. Oh, why don't you? Here comes a marshal. I bet he's gonna shoot Ringo. Oh, he can't. He don't even care as much. Why aren't you kids in school? Nothing doing, Jimmy. She says she's sorry, but that's all there is to it. Did you tell her it was important? I told her exactly what I told you. I'd tell her and offer to fix it up for her on the quiet if she wanted to see you. What else? What else what? You sure you didn't talk against me? Who's asking the dumb questions now? Didn't she give no explanation at all? What explanation could she give that you don't already know? I could only talk to her just for a few minutes. 
How does she look, Mike? Oh, just about the same, I guess. A little older, but just as pretty. Did you see my boy? Nah, he's on the loose today. What do you mean, on the loose? You hear those boys on the street? Yeah. Well, he's one of them. Which one, Mark? Well, I... I don't see him right now. That ain't a fine way to bring up a kid, hanging around in front of a saloon. Ain't you got a school in this town? Yep. We got a school here. You broke it up, partner. They all come down to see Jimmy Ringo, the big gun, the great hero. Does my, uh, does my kid think I'm kind of a hero? Nope. As a matter of fact, I understand he's a Wyatt Earp man. Earp? Well, you ought to have taught him better than that. That's me? And where was you all this time? I beg your pardon, both of you gentlemen, for interrupting you. But this is a kind of a serious situation for me, Marshal. What is it? Well, the truth of the matter, sir, is that Wes Fuller's burning my house down. What's he doing that for? Well, if he just felt like it, Marshal, that's the only excuse in the world he's got. Just felt like it. Drunk? He certainly don't act like he was altogether cold sober. All right, we'll go down there and see what we can do about it. Wait outside. Yes, sir. And thank you, too, sir, Mr. Ringo. It ain't like me to interrupt two gentlemen like you. Go on out, I said. Yes, sir. You moving on now? Yeah, I guess so. Sorry it had to be like this, Jimmy. It's not your fault. Watch yourself, partner. If I write to you, will you give her a message? You bet. Thanks. I'll be seeing you, Jimmy. Well, I hope so. But don't lay no money on it. I'll be seeing you, all right. How much, Mac? No, no, no charge, Jimmy. On the house. It's an honor to have you. Oh, thanks. Here he comes! Don't grab this from your wife. <laughs> it's an honor and a pleasure, Jimmy. Yes, sir. We're old timers, you know, you and me. Jimmy! Molly! I didn't know you were here, Jim. Well, you must be about the only one in town that didn't. I work late, so I sleep late. Work where? Here. What do you mean? I'm a singer, Jim. You've heard of singers, haven't you? Want to buy me a little drink, honey? You know. Well, sure, kid, sure. But why? Got to live, haven't you? But where's Bucky? Didn't you hear? Hear what? Buck was killed six months ago in Abilene. No, I didn't hear. I'm sorry, Molly. Who did it? I don't know. It was found in an alley shot through the back of the head. Well, didn't he... Didn't he leave you anything? Mm -hmm. A horse and a saddle, two guns, and $15. I never heard a word about it, Molly. Have you seen Peg? No. Do you? Whenever I can. Doesn't do a school teacher any good to be seen with a barroom singer, you know. Come on over here for a minute. There's something I want to ask you. Peggy wouldn't see me. Is it somebody else? You ought to know better than that. Oh, I don't. It's been a long time. There'll never be anybody else for Peg. Anybody else tried? Of course. Pretty girl like that. Young squirt named Hunt Brownley got after her. Thought she couldn't take care of herself. Boy, you should have heard her tell him off. What did he do to her? Nothing. Uh, nothing really. Just one of those loudmouthed barroom loafers who trying to move in on a woman without a husband. You know the kind. Do you see Jimmy, too? Whenever I see her. 
What kind of a boy is he? Oh, he's a good kid. Peg takes good care of him. Well, what is he, big or little? Big. About right for eight. Eight and a half. Look, you want me to talk to Peg? Well, Mark already talked to her. She said no. Will you let me talk to her? Are you, are you in some kind of a hurry? If you think there's a chance, I'll stick around a little while longer. You stay right here. I'll get her for you. Well, don't take too long. I'm a little behind schedule already. I won't be long. back in again. I bet two bits. That finishes me. Well, I don't want more of it either. Your Morning, deal, Joe. Want to sit in for a couple of hands, Johnny? Go. Oh, with cards I made myself, I wouldn't want to sit at that table. What do you mean, sitting up here playing cards on a day like this? Looks like any other day to me. You mean you ain't heard? Heard what? You mean you ain't heard who is in town? You have to put your foot on my chair. We ain't heard anything. We ain't been out of here since Tuesday. Who is it? Jimmy Ringo. Jimmy Ringo? Uh-huh. What in the name of thunder is Jimmy Ringo doing in Cayenne? Sitting right up there at the Palace Bar. Now? Yeah, we just left him there. What does he look like? He's a kind of a natural man. He don't look much different from a lot of other fellas. He looks mighty average to be such a big man. About as big as they come, I guess. How many hands has he got? Well, I never counted him, to tell you the truth. Oh, he's got two hands, just like anybody else. And some of these days, somebody's going to make a big name for himself by proving that's all he's got. A big name, right on his tombstone. Well, it's got to come sooner or later, ain't it? You don't expect him to go on forever, do you? So far as I'm concerned, he can. Hey, do you reckon he's still up there yet? Now, wait a minute, Hunt. You're good, but maybe you ain't quite that good. How do you know I ain't? If you ain't, can I have your saddle? Very funny, huh? What I mean, Hunt, you ain't ever really killed anybody like he has. Well, what do you know about it? You don't know everything I've done or every place I've been. Yeah, but you ain't ever been any place but Abilene, have you? Come on, let's go off and take a look at this big, important man. But I ain't finished cutting your hair yet. Well, oh, I'll come back. Come on. I hear he ain't too sociable. Might not like people looking at him. Well, he can get used to it. What about it, Ike? Oh, I got a wife and a couple of kids, Hunt. I better not either, hon. I got a mother who's my sole support. Well, suit yourself, yellow bellies. Well, it never was much fun to have around anyway. Jimmy Walsh, ain't you? Yes, sir. Ain't that your ma calling you? Jimmy, come here, right this minute. Just a minute, ma. If you don't come here this very minute, I'll skin you alive. Ah, oh, sure. Tell me which one gets killed, will you? But, ma, the other fellow's gonna see it. I don't care what the other boys are going to do. You're coming straight home with me. But, ma, Jimmy Ringle's in there and so is Hunt. I don't care. Somebody's gonna shoot somebody and I want to see it. Since when do I have to drink second-grade whiskey here, Mac? That's the brand you always drink, huh? This whiskey's been watered. No, it ain't, Hunt. You know I don't water my whiskey. I've never done that in my whole life. If I say it's watered, it's watered, and I'm going to prove it to you. I want you to give everybody in this room a drink out of that same bottle, and let's see what they got to say about it. Hunt, there ain't a thing in the world the matter with this whiskey. Did you hear what I said or not? I heard. And don't forget the gentleman at the table. I'd like to have his opinion, too. Please, Hunt, let's don't have no trouble here now. 
I'll ask him myself. I want you to settle a little argument, Mr. Ringo. Why should I? You've got quite a reputation for settling arguments, haven't you? Only my own. Well, you could say this one included you in a way. I say Mac Waters is whiskey. And you're kind of dumb to be drinking here, ain't you? Please, listen. Tell me what Don't you think. Don't trouble yourself. Well, you ain't very sociable, are you? Maybe if you got to know me a little better. I don't have to know you any better. Looks to me like there's a squirt like you in every town in the West. Now get away from here. It's kind of strong talk, ain't it, Mr. Ringo? You're Hunt Bromley, ain't you? Yeah. You heard of me already? Yeah, I heard about you. I heard you're a cheap, no-good barroom loafer. If I didn't have something else in my mind, I'd take them guns away from you and slap you cross-eyed. You're asking for trouble, Mr. Ringo. But you already got it, partner. Because I got a gun on you under this table. And it's pointing smack at your belly. Now, you gonna get out of here or not? I'm kind of disappointed in you, Mr. Ringo. We heard a lot about you around here, but I guess they forgot to tell us about the gun under the table. The older you grow, the more you learn, son. Now, turn around and head for the door. Keep moving and don't do anything sudden with your hands. I'll be seeing you, Mr. Ringo. All the way outside, Sonny. We need three horses quick, Mr. Barlow. Can you let us have them? Well, I don't see any reason why not. Hey, Marty, saddle up Prince, Fanny, and Dan for these men right away. You got some guns, too? Well, I guess I have, but what in the world are you fellows up to? How far is it to Cayenne? Well, it's about an hour's ride. <laughs> you start now, and you could make it by 10 o'clock easy. But ain't you going to tell me what's going on? We're after Jimmy Ringo. Jimmy Ringo. I was the only fella in town that didn't see him. What's the matter? Ma won't let me stay down the town to see Jimmy Ringo. You bet I won't. You're going straight up to your but room and stay there until that man's left this I town. Won't. Because you have to. That kind of woman goes to I don't room. care what you want to do. You're going to your room. Please, Ma. Now you stay in there. And don't let me hear another word out of you. About it. Did you ever hear of anything so terrible? Why, it's like the whole town's gone crazy. He's here just to see you, you know. Have you talked to him? I just left him. Why don't you see him, if only for a few minutes? Oh, Molly, what good would it do? It's all over now, you know that. Not for him. He's still crazy about you, Peggy. He was crazy about me before, but that didn't stop him from being the kind of person he was. He scares me, Molly. He really does. He might have scared you then, but not now. He's different. How different? The way Bucky was different that last year. You know, not wild anymore. Just sorry. And what good did it do, Bucky? None, I guess. But I liked it. Oh, if only he'd have stayed away. Is it somebody else, Peggy? Well, of course not. You know it's not. Not Mark? Mark? Why do you ask that? Is it? Well, I've never even thought of Mark like that. Of course not. You think he never thought of you like that? I doubt it. Mark's just... Well, Mark's just Mark. He's Jim's friend. Oh, you must be out of your mind. Then it's still Jim, isn't it? 
I guess so. I guess it always will be. How'd you like to see Ringo and Wyatt Earp square off at each other? Brother, I wouldn't even want to be in the same town when that happened. I still say he's yellow. I gave him the chance to show how good he was, didn't I? I reckon that's right. He didn't have a gun under the table after all. Yeah, I heard that. But both his hands were out of sight. He could have been holding anything. It took lots of nerve, though, to bluff like that. Well, what would you have done? Looked under the table? I wouldn't have even been there in the first place. He was the one that ducked out of a showdown, not me. You ain't going back there, are you? Well, I ain't leaving town, if that's what you mean. Marshall wants to see you, hon. Didn't you get the message? Yeah, I got it. I'll see him. When I get the time. He says now. Looks like everybody's drawn behind your back these days. All the smart ones. Come on down to Marshall's office. I'll be right behind you. Just you wait till Miss Pennyfeather hears about this situation. Hunt Bromley. Ringo wouldn't spit on Hunt Bromley. Come on. What do you want with me? Sit down. Didn't you get my message? I'm here, ain't I? How come you went over there and tried to pick a fight with Ringo? You don't have to worry about me, Pappy. I can take care of myself. I wish I had a hundred dollars for every blabbermouth I've heard say that. Well, he's yellow. I learned that much anyway. All right, then, Buffalo Bill. You see, it ain't no use to warn you, so I'm gonna tell you. Either I'm gonna lock you up in a cell until he's gone, or you're gonna get out of town for the rest of the day. Now, which is it gonna be? Me get out of town? What about getting him out? When you're the marshal, you can do the deciding. Meanwhile, you let me handle the job. Now, what do you like, the cell or the road? Looks like you're being mighty careful about that killer. I just don't want any great, big, terrible men like you scaring him to death. How long you known, Ringo? You want to be locked up? No. Then get going, south. And I don't want to see you back around here before sundown. You understand? You didn't say how long you know, Ringo. If you ain't out of town in five minutes, I'm going to have to take them guns away from you. Don't ever try that, Mark. I won't try it. I'll do it. Got my mind made up now. I'm gonna keep peace here today if I have to lock up every gunny in town to do it. Where's your badge? Put it on, this is official. I want you to take this scatter gun and sit in the palace with it. And if Hunter or any other troublemaker so much as sticks his head in the door, let him have it. What's Ringo gonna think, me sitting there with a loaded shotgun? Tell him I sent you. How long have you known Ringo, Martin? I'm gonna keep Hunt company for a mile or so. I'll be back in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Mr. Ringo, I, I'm Charlie Norris, Mr. Ringo. Mark Stretch's deputy. Mark wants me to sit shotgun on the front door. With what? I didn't bring it in with me because I didn't want you to get the wrong idea. Who is he? Yeah, he's the deputy, like he says. Well, where's Mark? He had to go out on another matter. He'll be along in a few minutes. All right, fine. I guess you got it. Well, have a drink at the bar. Thank you, Mr. Ringo. Is that clock right? No, not more than five or ten minutes out either way, Jimmy.
mind if I ask you a question? Not if you don't mind if I don't answer it. Who would you say was the toughest man you ever saw? I'll tell you the second toughest, Bucky Harris. You ever tangle with him? No, of course not. Bucky was my friend. Take it you don't want me to ask you again who was the first toughest. Looks to me like all your business is on the outside and none of it inside. Well, that don't worry me. Now. Just wait till tomorrow. After I'm gone, huh? This place will be famous, Jimmy. It'll be like a shrine. I'll probably have to put on two more bartenders. Maybe I ought to charge you a fee. You name it, Jimmy, and it's yours. Are you serious? Why not? You've done it. All right, I'll take it. It's a deal. But who's going to collect for you? I'll let you know before I leave. Where are you going? I can't stand this waiting any longer. I'm going to take a look around outside. All right, but i got to stay with you, you know? you get paid for this job? Sixty a month, why? Well, it ain't enough. What happened? There's a fellow with a gun in one of them windows across the street. I hadn't seen the sun flash out, you might have got it too. Which window? Stay away from the door. You wait here. But you ain't supposed to leave here, Mr. Ringo. I gotta get the gun away from that fellow. He's liable to mess up this whole business. Hey, who you reckon it is? I don't know. But it looks like I ought to be the one to go after him. Well, why don't you? Mark said stay here. I ain't got orders covering a situation like this. Anyway, he's still in there and he's still got to come out. Oh, Jerry, please, won't you give it up, please? Nothing is going to bring Roy back and that's all we're thinking about. Go outside and take a look. Look, if you want to find out who's getting ready to shoot through that door, you go outside and look yourself. You're the man in charge of peace around here. Peace, the man says. You better get out of here. It's my life too, Jerry. Go over to LMA's and stay there. Keep your mouth shut. All right. Don't move. Drop that gun. Drop it. Put your hands up. Kick it away from you. Further away. Now stand up. Now turn around. Let's see what you look like. I ought to blow your head off laying with me like that. What's the matter with you anyway? Can I put my hands down? Sure, just don't try anything funny with them. Now, what's the idea? My name is Marlowe. So what? You don't remember? No. You don't remember Roy Marlowe? Come on, partner. Keep talking. What are you getting at? Roy Marlowe was my son. You killed him. I never killed any Roy Marlowe. I never even heard of him. You must be out of your mind. Uh, you killed him, all right. But you don't even remember it. You're crazy. Do you think if I killed somebody, I wouldn't remember it? Are you sure? You're not safe running around loose, partner. You've got to be locked up. Come on. Open it. Now move ahead of me. Thanks, dear. To the marshal's office. Think I ought to go across there and see what's happening? Mark told you to stay here, didn't he? Thank you. Where is 
think. Well, he ought to be here. I am Mrs. August Pennyfeather. How do you do, Miss Pennyfeather? We are here to see Marshal Mark Strip. Oh, well, he ain't here now, ma'am. I don't know just where he is. We will wait. Yes, ma'am, do. Uh, won't you have a chair? Who are you? A deputy? Uh, no, uh, just a friend. He wouldn't be over there arresting that murderer, would he? No, ma'am, I don't think he is. Well, doesn't he intend to? That I couldn't say, ma'am. I ain't sure just what he's gonna do about it. Well, he'd better be making up his mind pretty soon. This is not Deadwood or Tombstone. This is a law-abiding community. And we want no murderers running wild through our streets, shooting and killing our women and children. He ain't exactly running wild through the streets, ma'am. He's a murderer, isn't he? Is he? Well, what else, pray tell, after all those killings? Well, I mean, maybe uh, he don't think he is. Well, then he must be a fool, too. Well, I'm just guessing, understand, lady, but maybe he figures it was either him or them. What do you mean, him or them? Well, I mean, maybe there was some, some misunderstandings, and it was either him or them that was going to get killed. Fifty misunderstandings in a row? Not fifty, ma'am. Nowhere's near it. Well, it, it was a lot nearer fifteen than fifty, and I can tell you that for a fact. What are you trying to do, take up for him? Oh, no, ma'am. No, indeed. No, indeed. Not me. Well, don't you think something should be done about him? Absolutely, ma'am. He ought to be arrested or, or run out of town or something. He ought to be hung. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. There's a lot to be said for that point of view, too. Good morning, ladies. Oh, good, good morning, morning. Good morning, Marshal. You're late. Late? Yes, ma'am. I figured you'd be around long before now. What do you intend to do about the man? Uh, nothing, ma'am. You're going to allow him to sit right there in that saloon as long as he pleases, demoralizing the whole town? Well, the trouble so far ain't been him demoralizing the town. It's the town demoralizing him. Some fellow right here just tried to demoralize him with a Winchester. Is that what you mean? We are here simply to remind you, Marshal Strip, that it is your sworn duty to keep peace in Cayenne. That's right, ma'am. And that's what I'm aiming to do to the best of my ability. Moreover, we, the ladies of Cayenne, regarded an outrage that this man, Ringo, a notorious murderer should be received here practically with honor and allowed to sit in state in our finest saloon. So now, we demand, Mr. Marshal, that you do something about it immediately. Such as what, ma'am? Either arrest him or chase him out of town. What do you think? Well, he's planning to leave anyway, ain't he? That's the way I understand it. What do you figure would happen if I tried to chase him out? I don't think you could do it and keep the peace at the same time. Hmm. That's what I thought. Can't you arrest him? He ain't done anything here to be arrested for. Well, isn't he wanted? Not by me, ma'am. Well, I'm just a stranger here myself, ma'am. But if you was to ask me, I'd say, hold off for another hour. Don't do anything that might make trouble until, say, half past ten. If he ain't gone by then, then let the marshal go to work on him. Shoot him down like a dog. Exactly, ma'am. That sounds very sensible. Uh, what do you say, lady? Oh, that's I heard fine. Oh, right right well, then mm -hmm. that's the way we'll have it, Marshal. Thank you very much. That's a very reasonable, intelligent idea. Well, don't thank me, ma'am. Thank Mr. Ringo. Oh, but of course. Thank you very much, Mr. Ringo. Uh, Mr. Ringo! Oh, oh, lady! Lady, oh, lady oh, please. Come on. Uh, uh, lady. Uh, lady. Uh, uh, I saw Molly. She said she'd talk to Peggy. I know. She's down there now. I better get back to the palace. That's where she'll be looking for me. What'd you do with Marlowe? Who? The fella in the window. Oh, well, I arrested him for you. He's in the cage back there. You gonna let him out? Not until you leave town. Wait a minute. I'm going with you. I forgot something, Mark. Say, where was your boy killed? You don't know. Oh, what would I be asking you for if I knew? Chelsea. It wasn't me, partner. I've never even been in the territory in my life. 
What time do you figure them brothers will be here? I got plenty of time yet. I hope so. I hope you ain't miscalculated any. They're on foot. I chased off their horses. They'll be doing good if they're here by 11. I see better fights than this at a prayer meet. Look at me like they ain't got as much spirit as they used to. I go for these eyes. Jake, is that horse in any shape to go again today? No, I don't think so, Mark. He's pretty near wore down to a nubbin. You got a fresh one here? I guess so. Why? Have him at the back door of the palace in about 15 minutes, saddled up with Ringo's stuff. Give him enough grub and water to make Santa Maria and charge it to the county. All right, Mark. working here today? Yeah. Too busy to work today. Hiya, Mac. Tommy. Glad to see you, Tommy. Yeah, looks like Saturday out there. How's Ellen? Fine, thanks. Give me a ride. I don't know about that. What'll Ellen say? Now, look, she said I could have one if it was dusty. Your yeah, wife don't like him to drink. Don't blame her. Uh, she knows I'm all over that sort of thing. Too much work to do these days. Join me? Oh, thanks. Well, the same thing. Well, you got a ranch? Yeah, we got ourselves a little place the first year we was married. It ain't very big, but it's coming along all right. Married the cutest little old girl you ever saw. No bigger than a bug. But, brother, did she settle this rounder down? <laughs> <laughs> That's her all right. Little but oh, my. How many head of cattle you got? About 400. Started with 50. Got horses, too? Well, we ain't got many. You need more outside help than we can afford for horses, but... I guess we've got about 30. Sounds like a right nice start. Yeah, that's the way her and I figured it. it. Takes a lot of hard work to make anything out of a place that little, but oh, we don't mind. Grazing land's good, and there's plenty of water, so I guess we're better off than a lot of people. We broke even last year, you know. Sounds mighty good. Have one with me. No, thanks. One is what she said. Much obliged to you, though, just the same. So long, Mac. So long, Tommy. Tell Ellen hello for me. Yeah, I'll tell her. Nice fella, Tommy. Kind of getting on towards time, ain't it? I'm gonna give her till the last minute. You don't want to draw it too close, you know. I gotta hear something, Mark, no matter how close I draw. Molly ain't back pretty soon. She told me about Bucky. Never heard it before. I guess he never knew what hit him. That's a fine life, ain't it? Just trying to stay alive. Not really living, not enjoying anything, not getting anywhere. Just trying to keep from getting killed. That's what Bucky used to say. Just waiting to get knocked off by some tough kid. Like the kind of kid I was. And the truth of the matter is, it don't pay much either. Here I am, 35 years old, I ain't even got a good watch. How'd you get out of it, Mark? I just quit. No, it ain't that easy. How'd you do it, really? You remember when the gang split up after that bank at Medina? We didn't split up. They scattered us. Well, anyway, some of us put into Prairie City to get some supplies. But the word was ahead of us, and you should have seen what we walked into. Yeah, I heard. Did you hear about the little girl? No. I got sick when I saw her. Who did it? Who knows? With all that shooting, it could have been me just as well as anybody else. Yeah, you don't know that. It don't matter. I was there. So when we got back to the hills, I kept it going. And I kept on a going until I got here, and I asked a man for a job. Well, did anybody ever say anything? I wasn't as prominent as you are. time I could have kept on a going too. Yeah, I could have rode right on back to Piggy. 
I used to wonder about going back and giving myself up. But I finally argued myself out of that one, thank goodness. Mark? Yeah? I got that horse out here. Be there in a minute, Jake. Uh, I guess ain't much use for waiting around here any longer. You can write to me and I'll give it to her if you want. Do any good? She's got her mind made up now. No place she could reach you, I reckon. No. Don't know where I'm gonna be. So long, Mac. Do you have to be going already, Timmy? Yeah. I'm gonna see if I'm up the line. So, what about your cut of the business? What do you want me to give it to? Him? Yeah. So who's the prettiest girl in town? Well, uh, I used to admire the banker's daughter, but I might have been influenced by her money. <laughs> Then there's a girl named Frankie May, and a school teacher. Give it and to the school teacher. I always had a kind of a weakness for school teachers. Put it in an envelope without any note or anything, and drop it on a desk. School teacher. Yeah, consider it done, Jimmy. And it's been a real pleasure to see you again, Jimmy. I often think of the good old days in Dodge City with you and Bucky and the other fellows. It makes me real homesick. Yeah, those were good old days, all right. Come on, Jimmy. Sometimes I don't think people have fun like they used to, do you? No. Jim, got a minute or two. Well, you look fine, honey. I'm doing all right. I'm here just to see you, you know. I know. Mark told me. But I just didn't know what to do, Jim. Well, it's all right now. How's Jimmy? He's a lot like you, I'm afraid. Well, don't you think you'd better do something about that right quick? Well, I was just joking. Oh, he's a little wild, like all kids. But he's a good boy. Do you know he's out there in front now? I took him away once, but it looks like the whole town's crazy today. I never saw anything like it. I looked out there at him. I couldn't see no kid that looked like me. He's still there, I'm afraid. Mark, or Molly tell you what I want? No. I want to get away from here, Peggy. I want to get out of this part of the country. See if we can't find us a little ranch, maybe. You and me and Jimmy. If only you'd thought of this before. Oh, well, we can still do it, honey. I could go on out to California, or the Northwest, where they ain't never heard of me before. See if I couldn't find us a little place. Then you and Jimmy could pack up and come on out there later. Or they would never know who we were. We could be safe out there the rest of our lives. When did you get this idea, Jim? Well, I didn't get it. It just kind of come over me, the way getting older comes over you. All of a sudden, you look at things different than the way you did five years ago. All of a sudden, I knew this was the only thing in the world I wanted. You and me and Jimmy, together on a little place somewhere. It's a wonderful idea, Jim. It's wonderful, but it's no use. Well, why not? Well, it's too late. Why? Mark done it. Eight years ago, but you couldn't. Not now. You're too well known. The only reason Mark doesn't arrest you is that he's Mark and you're his friend. But you can't depend on things like that forever. And one of these days, the federal officers will pick up your trail. And that'll be the end of it. They'll never give up, not as long as you live. What about South America? We can meet in New Orleans, get on a boat and... What's the matter, Peggy? Don't you love me? You didn't have to ask that, Jim. I've changed, you know. I'm different now, Peg. I just want to be somewhere. Don't you understand? Oh, look, darling. If it were just you and me, I'd do it. I'd go with you this very minute, anywhere in the world you wanted to go. But it's not just you and me. There's Jimmy, too. Oh, we can take him with us. No, Jim. We could run and hide and dodge the law all the rest of our lives. Not a little boy like him. He wouldn't understand. 
Don't you see? Jimmy. Give me another minute, will you? Quarter past ten, Jimmy. It's all right, I tell you. I got plenty of time. They're walking. They're gonna run some, too, you know. All right. Just one more minute. Somebody's after you. Never mind that. Listen. A year from now, if I come back, if I've been all right the whole year, will you talk to me about it again? No, Jim, it's no use. It's too Just late. talk to me, that's all. Maybe you'll feel different. Something might have happened. Nobody knows what can happen in a year. But you got to say you'll talk to me about it again. I will. Well, we can make it, honey. We can make it. You just wait and see. Where are you, Grandma? Now, look, Jimmy. Now, listen to me, Mark. I got to have five minutes more. You can't do it, Jimmy. You ain't got the time. How many times do I have to tell you I know what I'm doing? Those guys ain't got any horses. What do you think they're going to do, fly? What do you want five minutes more for? I want to see my kid. No, no, Jimmy, you can't look, you do dumb cow, man. I'm sorry, but my mind is made up. So get him, honey. I don't care how you do it, but get him. Right here in this room. What are you trying to do, mess up the whole business? I ain't trying to mess up anything. I just want to see my kid. But how can I fix it so he won't know? Yeah, you can do it, honey. You'll think of something. But I ain't leaving until I see him. Alone, me and him, right here in this room. And I don't care if there's 300 brothers. Can you hurry it up? I'll try. All I know is it's been eight years since I've seen my own kid. And it ain't gonna be another eight years before I see him again. You ain't here. I'm surely glad you don't drop in every morning. Huh? Where's Charlie? He just stepped outside. You want him? Tell him to come in here right away, will you? Sure, Mark. Jimmy! Jimmy Walsh! Jimmy! Is that your ma calling you? Yes, sir. Come here. Hurry, Jimmy. But, Ma, all the other fellas! Now, never mind the other fellas. Molly wants to tell you something. Come on with me. You know his horse? I know it. you to bust into a room like that. Nobody. Well, don't ever do it again. You knock first and wait till somebody answers. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, shut the door. Miss Molly here said you wanted to see me. Yeah, that's right. What about? I'll tell you in a minute. How old are you? Nine. You're eight and a half. How'd you know? Well, I got my ways. What grade are you in? The third. Honest. You know what grade I was in when I was your age? What? The seventh. At eight and a half? Well, I was in the sixth anyway. You was in the sixth grade at eight and a half? I wasn't far from it. Are you really Jimmy Ringo? <laughs> sure I am. What do you mean? Then how come you didn't draw when I kicked in that door? Well, draw on an unarmed man? I never did that in my life. You gotta give everybody a fair chance, don't you? Did you ever meet Wyatt Earp? Yeah. I've seen him once or twice. Is he the toughest man you ever saw? The bunch I run with, we just spanked Wyatt Earp's britches with his own pistol. Really? Why, the real tough ones laugh at Earp. Who is the toughest one you ever saw? You mean the real toughest? 
Yes, sir. Besides you. Well, I guess I've never seen anybody any tougher than a fellow you've got right here in your own town. A fellow by the name of Mark Strett. You mean Marshal Mark Strett? He's the toughest man I ever met. But he don't even carry a gun. Well, he don't have to, son. He can handle them barehanded. And we've been calling him softy. All I can say is, don't you ever tangle with that softy. No, sir. What's the matter? Nothing. Look, Jimmy Ringo was in here. He was here all morning. Had a drink right there where you're standing now. He ain't left town, has he? Not yet. He got held up back there. Well, now I'll tell you what I wanted with you. You see them kids out front? Yes, sir. Well, why ain't they in school? We come down to see what's going on. Well, they got no business hanging around in front of the saloon. I want you to get them out of there. But I don't know if I can or not. What do you mean? You don't know whether you can or not. When I asked for somebody to handle this situation, why, Miss Harris told me you're the smartest kid in town. That's why I sent for you. Well, I'll try. Don't try. You do it. You get them boys out of there the way Mark Strepp would, you understand? Yes, sir. That's a good boy. Guess we picked out the right fella after all. Well, he's all right. You got a good boy, Mrs. Walsh. Take a look outside, Polly. Get ready. All clear. Oh, goodbye, ma'am. You take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Goodbye, son. Bye, Mr. Ringle. I hope I see you again sometime. Well, what about next year? Will you really? You'll be watching for me a year from today. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry for what? A year ain't nothing. I can hide out that long. Look out for her, will you? You bet. I'm much obliged to you, Mark. That's all right, partner. Looks like you're gonna make it after all. Here he comes. I got Charlie out to head them fellas off anyway. Keep an eye on the kid for me, will you? I'll watch him. I'll see you a year from now. I'll be looking for you. What you fellas doing up there? Drop them guns. Drop! Is that you, Charlie? Come on down here. These are the fellas you meant? Come on out, you fellas. These them? Yeah, that's two of them. I told you fellas you was wasting your time. Watch your blinds, Charlie. How was you? I hit Mark for a raise. So long, so long. How about it, Ringo? Oh, I want to keep them square on the belly, both barrels. Oh, oh, they got to be secure. Hunt Bromley got Ringo. Hunt Bromley got Ringo. No, don't you please, Mom. Hear that? Hunt Bromley shot Ringo. Got him. Please, no, please. We gotta go back, please. No, please. Jimmy, no, come on. We've got please. to go home. Come on, get away. Don't gawk, Eddie. We got the doctor coming, Jimmy. Just lay still and you'll be all right. That boy, Hunt. We got him, son. He ain't getting away with it. No. I drew first. I was ahead of him. I seen it, Jimmy. You don't have to say anything like that. I seen who drew first. You heard what I said, Mark. I drew first. Now, don't argue with me. I know what I'm doing. You don't have to do me no favors, Pappy. Keep your mouth shut. If 
I was doing you a favor, I'd let him hang you right now and get it all over with. But I don't want you to get off that light. I want you to go on being a big, tough gunny. I want you to see what it means to have to live like a big, tough gunny. So don't thank me yet, partner. You'll see what I mean. Just... Now, you look here. Don't say anything, Hunt. Don't talk to me. Don't say one word to me. You can't. Don't talk to me. I tell you, I'll kill you if you do. You understand? Now, listen to me, yellow belly. Ringo's fixed you good. You're going to get it exactly like you give it to him. Because there's a thousand cheap, dirty, crooked little squirts like you waiting right now for the chance to kill the man that killed Jimmy Ringo. But it ain't gonna be here, Sonny. Not in my territory. So get going, now. Get killed somewhere else. <laughs> and that's just the beginning, tough boy. Sorry, but there ain't no more room, Mrs. Walsh. Ain't another seat left in the place. Is Mark inside? Well, yes, ma'am, he's inside. Will you tell him Mrs. Ringle would like to see him? Yes. Mrs. Jimmy Ringle. Mrs. Jimmy Ringle. And his boy. Yes, sir, Mrs. Ringle. Come on in, Peggy. 